How does everyone like the, the wall color? You actually can see people stand in front of the wall now instead of blending in, right? It's something, we got the nice blue sky. We have a moon with craters. So I, it's actually coming out pretty well, but Penny did a great job. You know, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And, I mean, fantastic job. Um, really good. I like the color. And the lights, so as soon as they get fixed, they are in the process of getting fixed. It's going to make it that much more better. But like Zodiac was saying, you know, it's also looking and seeing what's being done in the process. And sometimes it's good to see what God's doing in our lives, you know, to see where we were at, to see where we're at today, you know, and the work and the progress that God has done in each and every one of us. So we're going to be going in the book of Matthew, starting in chapter 10. I'm going to go through uh, quickly through verse 16 through 25. Not going to read it all, but just summarize it. And Father, this morning, Lord, we just thank you, God, for all that you are doing. Lord, we just ask, God, that you speak to our hearts. And Lord, just continue, Lord, to further us in our understanding of who you are and how you work in our lives. And, and the things, God, that we don't understand, Lord, that you give us understanding where it needs to be given, Father. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, it's talking about persecutions are coming if you're looking through the New King James translation. Okay, that's going to be the subtitle of that. And it starts at verse 16. It says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of, the, of, in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, it's saying... I'm sending you as sheep, and sometimes we have the sheep mentality. You know, we're, we're victims, or we're weak, or we're, we're something else, because gems are such beautiful creatures. You know, they don't know how to fight back, and they don't know how to do anything else besides going, man, right? But if you look, realistically, what a, a lamb does, or a sheep does, it says, in reality, you could search this later, not right now. It says, a sheep are actually surprisingly intelligent with impressive memory and recognition skills. They build friendships, stick up for one another in fights, and feel sad when their friends are being sent to the slaughter. Basically, if you're going through a trial, okay, because you're not going through a slaughter, but you may be going through a trial and you feel for one another. They are also one of the most destructive creatures on the planet. I'm not saying that we're destructive, but there's times that we can be when we decide to just step on each other's feet and toes and speak what we really feel. But look, it's saying that, yes, we are in this world and we are going to be facing some times in our lives to where it's going to be a struggle. But yet, as it says in that chapter, in that verse says, therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. That means don't pay back what they're giving back to you, but be smart. Think ahead. Know what's going to be taking place in your life. Know that you are going to be persecuted, that things are going to come against you, but nevertheless, be smart. Don't react how you would normally react. Don't be how you would want to be. Because I remember just the other day, hopefully he's not watching, but there was a person that we had talked to the other day during outreach and the guy was talking about his life, and he was a real cool guy. And he said a statement that was very true, you know. And it's a statement that I made before. It's talking about, if someone could help me out here, you can't, you could take the hood, you could take the, you could take the guy out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the guy, the homeboy, right? And that's right, because we had this part of us, even though you're not gang-related, but you have a different life that you lived before that you met Christ. And that life was beyond than what other people can imagine and see you as. And in reality, we have to know that, hey, there's times when we have to be tough. There's times that we have to stand up. If you, I mean, I'm not telling you to swing at anybody. I mean, don't, don't say that I'm saying that that's okay. But at all times, protect yourself, please. But the thing is, we have to know who we are in Christ. 
Yes, we have to be smarter than everyone else. We have to think ahead. We can't think of what's taking place right now at this point in our life. Because once we become consumed in that, then that's all it ever becomes. We don't get any further because now we're stuck in this particular situation and our mentality is trying to find a way out when it's not for us to ever find out. This is for God to work things out through our issues, through our ways. And going on in verse 27, it says, whatever, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, it says, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops, meaning preach is meaning generally to proclaim, announce publicly. See, the word has been shared with all of us. Each of us know a, a scripture or two. Maybe most of us know a whole lot of the Bible. And it's saying, now that you know this, go and speak about it. Go and say something about it. Don't just keep it to yourselves. Don't just think that you're special and that God's given you this ability to understand his word to further your understanding. But it's saying, now that you know something, why don't you go and share it with someone? Why don't you go and give out? Because sometimes when we find something that is given to us, we want to hold on to it. This is one of the first things that we do. We become greedy, not knowingly. And we can become like that with the word. We found out something. God gave a fresh revelation, but we want to be the first ones to speak on it, the first ones to say it. But when you have opportunity to be given to you, are you sharing it? Are you giving what God has given you? And this is the mentality. This is and spiritually where we have to, where we need to be at all the time. Just because someone may know a lot about God and Christianity and even his word, there's something that you may know that may even encourage that one person that knows a whole lot. So never withhold something back that God is generally telling you, look, you got to share this. You got to give this out. When there's opportunity, it's time to give it. In verse 28, it says, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It's saying do not fear them. Fear is talking about to be fear because of something or someone. To fear something or someone because and all in all, what in reality is there to fear? Besides the things that are going rampant in our minds. So I'm scared to do this because this might happen, or I'm scared to say this, even though it's the truth, but how would the people react? But when we are in the world, guess what? We said what was on our mind, and we didn't care, and we didn't give a hoot what anyone else thought or opinion was about us. We did it. When we walked in the neighborhood, and we walked, and we didn't use a crosswalk, right, because we were rebels. We walked in the street, in the middle of the street. We didn't look for the sidewalk. People honking their horns, we didn't even look at them. We walk, like, they're going to stop for me anyway. They're not going to run over me. They can't pay the insurance bill. You know, our, we had this mentality, like, we had the right of way. We had this mentality, hey, if they did honk the horn, some of us did say something back to them, right? We didn't bite our tongues. We didn't, we didn't withhold anything that was bad for them. But now that we have something good, what really stops us now? What is the main thing that holds us back? from sharing anything that the Lord has done. See, it's like one of those things that if you're going to go in, then go all in. Go all in. How many of you played poker or have played poker? Texas Hold'em. Oh, I love that game. I love that game, especially when my brother-in-law's come in town. I take advantage of them. <laughs> I do. I learned how to play the game. And then before I know it, I started just losing. I started going on pair twos, getting lucky, going all in, and I catch them off guard, right? But I, I just win. I love playing that, and it's a fun thing to do. But because that's exciting, that's something that you're into, that's something that you're wanting to do. But with God, we withhold. We don't go all in. We give when it's needed. We give when it's necessary at times. But yet, when it's something, if God is doing something in your life, it's going to show. 
You're going to want to be giving it all the time. You're going to want to be saying something about God all the time. Look, it's not that you're being religious. It's not that you're being a holy roller. It's this is who you are. This is your identity. And if you know who you are, then there's no shame in sharing it. I have people at work. And I know she's going to watch this because she watches the videos. I don't have to say nothing. But people will be out there speaking for you. People will be out there speaking out for you, speaking up for you. Because as sheep, you know, we tend, we tend, tend to think of ourselves as weak, as vulnerable, as like I'm a victim. I have to be gentle. I have to be loving. So if something comes my way, I, I can't do nothing about it. No, that's just a lie. You're human. You're going to react. You're going to react. And you're going to say things that, that you're going to regret. But in all in all, it's about learning and how to give it to God. It's about learning as far as if I'm in it, I'm going to stay in it, and I'm just going to do it regardless of what people think. And this is the type of mentality that we should have. You know, there's one saying that this one brother had said a long time ago, you know, and it was about, you know, it's about having your feet planted, having ten toes down. You know, it's about standing your ground. It doesn't matter about the looks that you're receiving. It doesn't matter what you may be going through. Because if you're going through something, that's cause for growth. That's cause for change. That's cause for something to exciting to be taking place in your life. You're not enjoying it at the moment, but you know what? There's a light at the end of that trial. There's something good that's going to take place right in front of you. So when you're feeling it at that time, you have to think about, you know what? I'm just going to push through. I'm going to finish this portion right here because there's something good that's going to take place once I get past this one issue, once I get past this one hindrance. Verse 29, it says, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. 32, it says, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my father who is in heaven. And confess is meaning to confess Christ personally, meaning to profess or acknowledge him. See, we can say that we love God. I go to church. I, I do all that thing. I do communion. I pray the rosary. I, I do all these things. I, I, I do all that. But for example, let's just say, let's, let's think in reality now. We all, some of us here are married, right? Some of us here are married. Some of us don't want to be married, right? Well, good luck to you because good, good thing. And some of you want to be married, so just wait patiently on that and seek the Lord on that one too. But some of you are married, so you wear rings to the workplace, right? So if you, well, most of you do, job occupation. So some of you that do, you wear a ring, but yet, you speak nothing about your family. You speak nothing of your spouse. So how do people know that you're married? Right? Because they see a ring on the finger. What if you don't wear a ring? How do people know you're married? Do you speak of them? Let's think of another instance. We say we go to church, but yet we don't say nothing about Christ. We don't say nothing about who he is and what he's done. We don't share the good news. So in all of that, what makes us different from everyone else? What makes us different from being just a regular churchgoer? What makes us and separates us uh, else from everyone else? See, it's the mentality that we can carry for ourselves. We can say that we love God, that we go to church, but yet, how does our lifestyle show for that in itself? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
So it's, it's kind of hard to tell at times, are we really doing it or are we not? And this is where we have to stay in close relationship with God and say, you know what, Lord, I need help in this area. You've done so much, but yeah, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how to start. But all it is is just a little bit of I believe in God and just telling people. If they're asking, if they're being curious it's about sharing his work that he's done in your life, there's nothing to be embarrassed about that. There is a lot of people out there that have a misunderstanding of who Jesus really is. They don't understand him. They understand that, yes, Jesus died on the cross, that he was nailed to it, and that I get to go to heaven now. And that's all they understand, and that's all they know. And that's all they're ever going to live by. But it's not until we speak out and begin to tell them, you know what, the truth, because what, the truth will set you free now they're getting more understanding. Now they're getting some type of insight now. Not only that, guess what? They're going to be watching you. They're going to be watching you and how you react and how you talk and how you act out. And when you're stressed out, how are you acting? When you're upset, how are you behaving? When someone gets you, rubs you off on you the wrong way, how are you talking bad about them? They start watching you. They start keeping you accountable. And that's something that we don't like, the accountability. You know, the more people know, the more people will watch us. Oh, if I'm on social media, guess what? I have to watch what I post up now. I have to watch everything that I do. Why? Because now I'm being watched. Now that I have this going on and that going on, and I added them as a friend, now that they're watching something, they're going to compare that to my life now. Now I have to watch everything that I do. And it shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't have to watch what you do because if you're in the right relationship with Christ, it's going to go the good way. It's going to go the right way. You're not going to have to be like, well, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? And start walking on eggshells. That's not a comfortable feeling. But he's saying, therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. You know what? Every opportunity that I have, I'm going to tell someone about God. I really am. Because it, the day that you deny him, the day that you're like, well, I go to church, but I just go to go. Or I go to church it's because it's a Sunday and that's part of what I do. Are you professing your faith or are you just kind of fitting in with everyone else? We have to be careful in this area. I'm not telling you to go everywhere and tell everyone, hey, and put yourself out there. It's about when you have that time, the opportunity, take that time and take that opportunity to tell someone. It says in 33, but whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before the Father who is in heaven. Verse 34, it says, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Oh, no, here's, here's Jesus now. He's like, look, people are saying, like, Jesus is loving, Jesus is kind, Jesus is all this. Well, obviously they haven't read Matthew, right? Matthew is saying... Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Peace is meaning among individuals, peace and harmony. Jesus is saying, I didn't come to bring that. So don't misunderstand me. Don't think that I'm this loving guy because I'm not. He says, but a sword and the sword as of standing for war as opposed to peace. This is what Jesus is talking about. And it continues to say in that verse, For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own. That doesn't mean hate your mother-in-law. That doesn't mean hate your father-in-law. That doesn't give you the right to do that. So those of you that are thinking that, don't. You got to continue reading, okay? You got to understand what Jesus is saying. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Man, Jesus is laying it out there. Look, dude, if you love them more than me, you're not worthy. This is Jesus talking. This isn't me making stories up. 
Jesus is saying, I brought this sword. I brought something to bring separation in families, separations in the household, separation in marriages. Oh, what does that mean? I could get a divorce. No, it doesn't mean you can get a divorce. Don't take it that way. But what it's talking about is your belief. It's talking about, you know what? You may be in agreement with what God is doing in your life, but your spouse may not be in agreement. Your spouse may be the one coming against God's will, and guess what? It doesn't matter what your spouse thinks. It doesn't matter their opinion, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. They're the one stopping you from fulfilling your purpose. Why are you being obedient to them and stepped into the Lord and to the Lord? See, this is what Jesus is talking about. He said, I'm coming in and I'm dividing people up because there are going to be those that believe and those that don't believe. So what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to go in with those that are fighting against my will? Are you going to side by them? Because if you are, I don't know you. I don't know you. Now, this is Jesus talking. And I have to say that because it's his word. And that's what it is. And that's what it is. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you something. I was never nice. What a surprise, right? <laughs> I was never nice. Yeah, okay. Man, I'll tell you what. I don't, even know, I don't even know if we were married then. I think we were married. My wife met God. Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. I was still in the streets, right? I was still doing my thing. And all of a sudden, my wife comes home. I met God. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. But then she started changing on me. She started changing on me. I'm like, oh, heck no. You ain't changing for God. Like, in my mind, I'm like, no, this is my apartment. <laughs> Everything. And you want to change for God? And she had this, like, character of, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, man, oh, heck no. That, was, that started a fight right there. And so she would go and she would pray, and I would hear her from the bottom of the stairs. I'll hear her up top. She'll be praying, and she'll be praying out loud. Well, to me it was loud, but she was just having that time with the Lord, and I'm just, like, irritated. I'm getting stirred up. I'm walking in circles in my living room, like, how can I make her be quiet? How can I make her be quiet? How can I make her be quiet? Doing my own prayer while she's praying to God upstairs, right? <laughs> and I'm talking to myself. How can I make her be quiet? How, how, can, I, how can I do this? How can I interrupt <laughs> And I'm walking in circles, and I'm just trying to figure something out because my mind is just running rampant. But she is pursuing God. She found the love of her life, and she is going after him, and she is pursuing him. And I'm just like, man, where did this come from? And that was just a tip of the iceberg. There was times that she had to pray. She had to lock herself in a room. She had to lock herself in a bathroom and pray out. While I was on the other side, banging on the wall, banging on the door, saying, I can hear you praying. You need to stop it. You need to be quiet. Kept going. Kept going and going and going and going and would not stop. Jesus was in the work. He was in the work. And even though there was a love for each other, there was that separation. Either you're going to serve me. Or you're going to submit to your messed up husband. She made the choice quick. She made the choice quick. I could admit that and be happy with that because of who she is today. And I'm not, I'm not uplifting her or anything. But you know what? If she did not do according to the Father's will. And she did not step in and do what she was needing to do. Where would I even be today? Would someone else have even given me the opportunity and reached out to me? Would someone else would have came out to me and told me the good news, how the way that I looked back then? 107 pounds, wet and soaked and clothes, looked disgusting when he looked in the mirror, all sucked up. Who would have given that guy a chance? Now, if the spouse, if the girlfriend was not, was not submitted to Christ and did not push in and did not fight, what would have happened to that one? And see, this is what I'm telling you today. There's something that God is doing in your life. And you don't have no one else to push you. You don't have no one else to encourage you. You don't have no one else to say, you're doing a good job. 
But all in all, you're doing it for someone that is watching you. You're doing it for someone that you're actually praying for, that you don't know it's actually happening for that one person. You're fighting for something. It's not just for yourself because you already acknowledge God. You already have God in your life. So you're fighting for something different. You're fighting for something new. It's no longer for yourself. You're fighting for that one that you're praying for, that you're seeking God for. You're fighting for that one that has been drawn away by themselves and you're wanting them to come back, but you don't know how they're going to come back. It's through your prayers. It's through your obedience. It's through when you're deciding, you know what, I'm going to speak the truth even though they're going to be hating on me. And even though they're going to hate me for that day. But if it's a correction from the Lord, I'm going to say it because why? His word does not come back void. And this is the mentality that we have to have because if we don't have this, then we're walking around defeated. We're walking around scared. We're walking around in eggshells. And that's not who you're meant to be. It's not who you're meant to be. You have to sometimes make that unpopular decision. Of saying what is right. What is God wanting to say. Regardless of how others may react. Because I tell you one thing. If it's bothering you. It's going to bother you until you let it go. It's going to bother you. It's going to keep you up at night until you release it. So if there's a burden on your heart. There's something on you. And it's like. And it's God. And it's God telling you to say something. And you're not saying it. Guess what? I'll sleep for you because you're not going to get so much sleep yourself. God's going to keep bothering you. He's going to wake you up in the middle of the night. It's not because you have a weak bladder. I'm not speaking from experience. But God is waking you up. He's awakening you. He's trying to get your attention. But at 3 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, that we, some of us don't think of, you know what? I'm going to pray. I'm going to see why I keep waking up because I cannot go to sleep for right now. And, Lord, is this you? Am, am I being awoken because I cannot go to sleep? I'm restless. I can't think. I don't know what's going on. Are you trying to speak to me? Being more awakened to what God is wanting to do. Verse 35, or 38, I'm sorry. Verse 38, it says, And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. The cross is meaning that portion of affliction which is endured by peons and good men as a trial of their faith. And to conform them to the example of the crucified master. That's heavy. That's heavy. We couldn't say we carry our cross, but yet it's just for show and tell. I have this ministry, show and tell. This is what I do for God, and, and I do a lot, show and tell. You become more of a show and tell than telling someone about God and giving them the word. Remember, works without faith is dead. Works and faith come together. It's about picking up our cross and saying, you know what? I see this hill that's ahead of me. I see what's going to take place. I have an idea of what may happen. And I have an idea of what I'm going to lose out on as far as my own personal life. The sacrifices that I'm going to have to make. I have an idea but is this going to be more pleasing to me carrying my cross every day knowing that I'm doing everything right according to my understanding to God's will? Or am I just going to live the life of I go to church, no impact, not touching people that I'm coming to contact with, and just being an ordinary Christian fitting in with everyone else and not feeling that joy, not feeling that completeness, not feeling that, man, okay, I'm, I feel good today. I done what was needed to be done, and I put the Father's business before my own. Now I have time to go fishing. Now I have time to go bowling. 
Now I have time to go eat something that I really enjoy and know that it's like, man, and I really like this other part over here too. And now we're fighting for our old life rather than pursuing the new life that God had given us. And now we're in a battle of our own. So we have to come to realize, look, serving God, man, it's the best thing that there is out there. It's the best medicine. It's the best remedy. It's the best of everything. Now are you going to have your good days and your bad days? Oh, yeah. You'll have your good days, and you'll have your bad days, and then you'll have your lonely days, and then you have your days where you don't want to wake up. Especially when the time goes forward. Oh, my gosh, you lose your sleep on that. You don't want to get up that day because you're losing out on your sleep. But the fight, the fight is the exciting part. The fight is pursuing God, knowing that you're going somewhere, that you're pursuing God. Now, the fight in the world, when we didn't know what we were fighting for, we became drained. We became tired. We became depressed, lonely, isolated. We became all these things with no hope. I tell you what, I'd rather fight for God every day, knowing that there's something that I'm fighting for. And even though sometimes you don't even know what you're fighting for, but God reveals it to you later because you look at the progress that's, that was being done, and then you look at God and say, man, I did not know that you're doing this in my life. Wow. God, you didn't, you're, you're doing tremendous things in me. And we begin to look at that. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. We got to ask ourselves, what are we willing to give up? What are we willing to lay off to the side for Christ? Because everyone has a different way of serving God. Because people are called differently. People have different purposes. People have different callings. So what may work for you may not work for the next person. It may not. So you have to figure out, Lord, what works best for me? And there's one way to do that. That's through prayer. That's through seeking him out. And then you got everyone that's around you to pray for you. You got everyone around you to help you seek out what it is that you're needing to know more about yourself. There's people in the church that are gifted that are able to see into that. So don't go banging your head up against the wall trying to figure it out on your own. You got God as the ultimate resource. As the ultimate resource. And then you got everyone else around you. That is fighting the same battle as you. Different battles, different strategies. But every outcome is the same when you give it to God. Verse 40 to 42 in closing. It says, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Look. Whoever receives you and whoever listens to you, they're going to be blessed one way or another, especially when you're giving it to them. When you have a friend, when you have someone that is willing to step in and tell you the truth, whether you like it or not, you're going to reap from it if you take it in. If you listen to it, if it's godly advice and you know it's right, but it's something that you don't want to hear and it's correction, you're going to take it. Knowing that God is in it, and your reward is going to come from it. Because why? Because when we're told to do something, when we're told something that is correct, 
and we listen to it and we're obedient to it, then that means we're going to see the outcome of it because it's all part of God's work. It's all part of God's instruction. It's not like just when someone's telling you good information, you're just sitting there like, yeah, that sounds good. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's as far as it goes. And then you get mad at the person because nothing good happens out of it. It's because you chose not to listen. You chose not to follow. You know, when I was young, well, I still am young, but when I was younger, lived under the parents' household, per se. When I was younger, my parents would always tell me, don't do this. I don't want a baby while you're still under the house. I don't want you to go and hang out with those guys or bad news. Just because I wanted, what do they call it, a wife beater? Just because I wanted to wear one of those. They would always tell me something that was supposedly supposed to be good for me. But in my mind, I was like, what, what do they know? How can they even tell me something different if they don't even know themselves? This was my mentality because I was young. And I didn't listen to anything that they said. I didn't do anything that they said. Why? Because I was young and I was smart. I knew everything about life because I was experiencing it all. So you can't tell me what's good and bad for me because I didn't get a hangover last night. And I, I kind of estimated how much I could handle, okay? You know, right? So you can't tell me what's good for me, what's bad for me. But all in all, you know what? Parents were right. There's a lot of stuff I could have been saved from. A lot of headaches, a lot of, man, a lot of stuff. And sometimes we can take advantage of that. We can take advantage of it because we've heard it for so long, but yet we chose to ignore it for so long at the same time. And we no longer, no longer know what is good from what is good because now we became more shut off than anything else. And when someone is trying to come in and give you that same good news, when someone is trying to come in and give you a word from God, you don't want to receive it because it doesn't fit in with your lifestyle. It doesn't fit in with your understanding. But I'm going to tell you something, is that they're not telling you because they feel like telling you. They're not telling you because, oh, it's going to make them feel good. The only reason it's going to make them feel good is because God's been bugging them. And they finally release it to you, and that's all it is. And if it rubs you the wrong way, well, you know what? You take it to God. You have to take it to God. Don't take it out on that person. Don't take it out on the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Unless you're going to shoot hot wings their way. Then I'll take hot wings, resties. I'll take those all day. Don't shoot the messenger. Someone has to be bold to tell you the truth. That's what a good friend does. That's what a good friend does. A good friend will tell you the truth. A good friend you will argue with. And a good friend, after all of that, you will forgive them and you'll continue to be their friend. Why? Because you respect the friendship and you respect where it is that they were coming from. And knowing that their lifestyle is who they are in Christ, you're going to accept that. And then you're going to take it in and say, you know what, maybe you were right. In verse 42, in closing, it says, and whoever gives one of these little ones all only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, uh, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. You have to, we have to remember that we're representatives. We're ambassadors. We're the ones that are hold accountable to give people the news. Now, It's about just serving Christ faithfully. That's what it really is. You're not going to be like the person next to you. People live different lives. I'm going to tell you that. 
What a shocker. People live different lives. That doesn't mean judge them for it. As long as you continue to preach Christ and you tell them the truth, that's all you can do. You can't force anyone. You can't push anyone. But all you can do is just be their friend. You can't hold anything against them saying, well, I told them about this and they're still doing it. Well, then that's them. As long as you are being obedient to God, then that's what really matters. As long as you give in that word and didn't hold back, then that's what matters. I won't be able to reach anyone else that you won't be able to reach. Meaning, I can't reach everyone. Some of us can't reach everyone. Another person can't reach everyone because we come from different lifestyles, different races, different everything. You are your own person, and you alone are accountable to God. Everyone's going to live their lives however they see fit. But it's not about the rights and wrongs. What it is, it's about telling people about Christ and what he's done in your life and spreading the good news and telling people, look, this is who God is. And let God bring the change. Let God bring in the conviction. Let God do the work. Why? Because if you try to do the work, guess what? You are going to get stressed out. You are going to be like, well, they're not changing. They're not developing. They're not doing anything. Well, that's not up for you. You have to let God do the work. Man, people had to have patience for me when I was growing up. God, I'm surprised God didn't strike me. You know, but God can do miracles. God can do changes. Continue to pray for those that you're trying to reach out to. Continue to pour into them whenever you have that opportunity. Don't let it go to waste. You know, we wake up, we go to work. And even though we don't feel like going to work, we still get up, we get dressed, one eye open, and we walk out to that car, and then we just go. Every day, we just got to get up, no matter how we feel, and just, man, Lord, you want me to do this today? Okay, I'm going to do it. I don't feel it. I'm just going to do it. Why? Because at the end, I'm going to feel better than what I was when you were bugging me. Better than what I was when you were on my back, on my case, because I want to speak up. Be encouraged today. Remember, sheep is what Jesus was describing to disciples. And I'm going to read it one more time. Sheep are actually surprisingly intelligent with impressive memory recognition and recognition skills. They build friendships. Stick up for one another in fights. And feel sad when their friend are being sent to the slaughter. They're also one of the most destructive creatures on the planet. We have the ability to come together and serve God. Or you could be a goat. And you can have horns. You can start butting people out of the way. Whatever you want to do. But I'm going to tell you one thing is that we're here. We're serving God from different aspects of life. And every opportunity that you have, just share. Fear God more than anything. Fear God more than people. Fear God more than that. Because people can't do nothing to you. They can hurt your feelings, but that's about it. Feelings are meant to be broken, okay? I'm going to tell you that. Feelings are going to be broken. Feelings are going to be hurt. But always put God first no matter what. Amen.